Hi, I'm Nathan from FTC Team 4717 and welcome to our Onshape assembly series. In today's episode, we will go over how to use the planar mate. So for this tutorial, I've created a new part that we're going to add on to assembly 3 that we created in the last tutorial. Today, I'm going to be adding this part onto the slider using the planar mate. To start off with, I'm going to go into assembly 3 and I'm going to disable the slider mate that we created last time. I'm going to do this by right clicking on slider and going down to suppress. So now you can see I can move this part outside of this rail just like that. And now I'm going to right click and click fix so that I can no longer move this piece around. This will make it easier for me to work with this piece and I'm going to unsuppress the slider mate later on so that I can add it back onto the rail. So now I'm going to press insert and insert my new part called planar mate part one. The way that I want to attach this part is I want this face and this face to be aligned as well as this top face and this top face to be aligned. The way I would usually do this if this piece was a perfect square is I would add a fasten mate onto both of the corners but since there isn't a corner on this side I'm going to have to use the planar mate. So the way that the planar mate works is that it constrains two faces to be inside the same plane. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be adding three different mates. So to add a planar mate, I'm going to click on the planar mate icon, which is located right next to the slider mate. Then I'm going to select the two faces that I want to mate together. I'm going to start with this face. Then I'm going to go around to the back of this blue piece and add another mate connector. You can add this mate connector on any point on this face, but I'm going to choose this one in the middle. So now I can press the green check mark, which will add that mate. And you can see that I can now move around this part to the left and to the right, as well as up and down, but I can't move it in and out. So because of that planar mate, this face and this face will always be on the exact same plane. So now I'm going to add another planar mate by once again clicking planar mate and clicking on this side. Once again, it doesn't matter which point I go to, as long as it's on the right face. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side of the green piece. So now when I press the green check mark, I can move this blue piece up and down, but I can't move it left or right. So what I've pretty much done is create a slider mate without using the slider mate tool. And just like the slider mate, I can go into my planar mate and add offsets as well as limits. I'm not going to add that right now, but it works exactly the same as how it has on the other mate tools. Finally, I'm going to add my third planar mate by clicking on the planar mate tool once again and clicking on both of the top faces. So now when I try to move around this blue piece, it can no longer move in any direction and I've essentially created a fasten mate. As you can see, the planar mate usually works better with abnormal shapes than the other mate tools do. So now to make my slider go back onto the rail, I'm going to right click on the green piece and click unfix. Then I'm going to go over to my slider mate and right click and go down to unsuppress. Now I can move both of these parts up and down on the rail just like before I suppressed my slider mate. So that's how you use planar mates to attach two different parts inside of an assembly. That's it for this episode, so thanks for watching and see you next time.